Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the D-Rich Show, where we talk anything and everything crypto. Now, here's your host, D-Rich. Hey everybody, welcome back to the D-Rich Show. This is D-Rich and today is June 30th, 2021. Happy hump day folks. I hope that this fun video finds you all in good health, good spirits, and good energy. So good morning uh, to all of the new subscribers, to um, the subscribers in general. So thank you all for tuning in to my late video yesterday. So I appreciate you guys uh, being consistent, being consistent. So that is greatly appreciated. So I woke up early this morning. I told you that I would to uh, get um, involved with some Peter Thiel information. And the reason why I'm going down this rabbit hole with Peter Thiel, um, AWASH had, uh, was doing a lot of research on him and found a lot of interesting things and uh, wanted to bring it to my attention. So I want to bring it to your attention about some things about Peter Thiel as well as we talked last week briefly about him having uh, his I Roth IRA set up, uh, making um, five billion or something like that. I'm only starting with 2000. So um, the reason why um, we're gonna talk about him today because of his connections um, in the technology field, um, as far as uh, we're concerned, um, he um, started off with the open coin early on. Um, and then I think that he uh, will get into why He's associated uh, in a roundabout way with Ripple, XRP, um, and things like that, and some of the other technologies um, that he is involved in. And um, we're going to connect some dots here because I'm starting to see um, some of his involvement um, in a roundabout way when it comes to uh, certain cryptocurrencies, uh, certain technologies, and certain platforms. So um, this is where we're at, um, and we're going to get into that today. So, um, without further ado, I don't want to waste too much time, but um, good morning wherever you are, um, good afternoon, good evening, um, where, wherever you are. So, just want to say hello, good morning, and let's just get going. Anyway, uh, coin market cap right now, Bitcoin's dominance 46.1%, Ethereum is at 17.6%, and we got a total global market cap of $1.4 trillion, uh, the did shave. Uh, some off last night while I was asleep. Looks like the market is taking a little boo boo, which is okay. Um, you know, you gotta, you can't always go up in a straight line uh, when you're trying to get to, you know, a certain point because either people are taking profits or, you know, people are, <clears throat> you know, doing what they need to do um, so we could get a little retracement and hopefully we'll shoot back up. Bitcoin thirty four thousand six hundred sixteen dollars eleven cents. Ethereum is at. Uh, two thousand one hundred and thirty one dollars thirty six cents and we got binance coin two hundred and eighty nine dollars and seventy nine cents there at number four while we got cardano still sitting at number five at a dollar thirty two um here is uh, dogecoin at twenty four cents and um again it's back above you know that uh trend line there hopefully it you know continues to bounce back up once it hits about thirty cents i think that will uh, get to another level with Dogecoin to bounce back up. So anyway, number six there and our beloved XRP took a little dookie. Sorry, I didn't mean to say it like that, but yes, it did last night. It's 66 cents. Okay, 67 cents almost there. So again, a good um, opportunity to accumulate. All right, so if you're still needing to accumulate that XRP under a buck, here's your opportunity. Here's that chance. Um, because again, folks, I don't know when a settlement might be imminent. I'm not sure even if they're going to have uh, that Sunshine Act um, meeting here shortly. Um, so, you know, do your due diligence. If you need to trade out of some stuff that's not doing too well, I encourage you to do so. Um, but again, you know, don't trade out of a position uh, of something that is a solid project, okay? Anyway, Polkadot is at number nine, $15.38, and Uniswap, $17.77 to round out the top 10. And again, folks, looks like there's a, a massive, uh, 
well, I won't say massive. It's not that bad, but it is kind of bad when you are getting momentum and then all of a sudden you turn back around. Um, somebody's shitting on the market again. But, you know, be patient, persevere. Um, that's what we're here for. Still nascent, um, you know, asset class. So we just got to be patient and allow the market to, you know, uh, recover um, to where we needed to be full force and effect. So um, if there's opportunities for you to get in the market, great. If not, still hold your position because those are the best positions to be had because you don't want to you don't want to do anything, you know, foolish. Um, I, I can speak from experience. I've done a lot of foolish things when it comes to um, investing and then, you know, getting out of it and not allowing it to fully mature or appreciate. So um, just take it from me. You know, take your take your time. Okay, make sure you're taking notes. Make sure you're looking at the the prices from your entry point, um, and if it goes down, how to dollar cost average as well. So, anyway, we're gonna get into Peter Thiel here. All right. So if you don't know about Peter Thiel, um, we're gonna learn a little bit about him today, and I think that uh, you'll be impressed with some of the things that uh, he's all about. Now. I know that I'm going to trigger some folks today, so we're going to we're going to get into um, the early portion of the video where you know, we could get it out of the way because I don't want to trigger too many people. But this is not a politic or politi uh, you know political video whatsoever. I try to keep political uh, things out of it, but if it has anything to do with um, what's going on with technology, uh, cryptocurrency, or digital assets. Most definitely, I'm going to report on it. You know, I, you know, I want to remove the feelings of it all, so you guys can understand some of the things that are going on uh, behind the scenes, um, unbeknownst to any of us. So, anyway, um, number of portfolio companies he has 65. Number of exits 15. Okay, I'm not sure what those are. Okay, investor type. He's an investor partner, uh, partner as well as an individual angel. Um, Investor, okay. Peter Thiel is a technology entrepreneur and investor. He first uh, gained attention for innovation in banking and startup finance. Today, he is also known as a member or mentor to the PayPal Mafia and of entrepreneurs, as well as for his warnings of a coming technology deficit with severe economic consequences. He works to accelerate innovation. Uh, to prevent such crisis, you can read more right there down there. Um, this is uh, coming from crunchbase.com. So if you want to go check that out, um, I don't have a membership for this, so I won't be able to see all of his um, personal investments. So um, he has a total of 79 investments. Peter Thiel made 79 investments, <clears throat> and their latest investment is a private equity ground, BitDAO which was on June 16th, 2021. So I'll be looking a little bit more about that. Peter Thiel also invested 230 million in BitDAO, okay? 230 million, okay? So that's a private equity round. And then on May 20th, um, he um, made an investment in Rumble, rumble.com, which is a... Um, a competitor to like YouTube and things like that and I do post my videos on rumble so you know um, it's, an, it's another good platform for you to go watch videos and things like that so um, if you are um, on rumble um, you can follow me there as well okay but um, we'll get into um, the, a connection there um, as far as rumble and then most definitely you can look at some of the other um, contributions or you know things that he's uh, donated to as far as uh, his investments okay um, then you got partner investments you got 93 of those you got some of these here I'm not sure um, you know what some of these are okay you know and then you can show more and again you got to um, get the subscription and I'm not going to pay for a subscription uh, for this to um, you know look at other stuff so um, Maybe I will at some point, you know, the more I get into all of this, then we'll, we'll do all of that. So um, he exits. Uh, here's 15 of the exits, 
which are the notable of uh, Thinkful Redux as well as PayPal. All right. So he've exited some of these positions there. And then um, you got jobs. He got five current jobs. Peter Thiel has five current jobs, including co-founder at Mithril, uh, Mithril Capital Management Partners at Founders Fund and investor at LinkedIn. Additionally, Peter Thiel has six past jobs, including visitor at Stanford Law School. So here you go, folks. He's a very intelligent, smart person, brilliant as far as I'm concerned, um, where he comes from uh, when it comes to Stanford and um, things like that and what they're doing up there at, at that university. All right, so here, here we go, some more. All right, you got some related hubs. All right, you can check it all out here on Crunchbase. And again, his education is at Stanford. Okay, he has a BA in philosophy. Okay, and uh, he also has a, a law degree. So, I mean, the guy knows his stuff. All right. And then you got some recent news and activities. And you can read all of these little articles there and view all there. All right. So, let's just go ahead and get this out of the way, folks. So, um, we can not get too triggered. Okay. And if you are, um, can't do anything about it. Um, I'm just going to report on the news. That's all I'm here to do. And that's all I need to do. Okay. And if you are one person or the other, um, on one side or the other, it doesn't matter because I still respect whoever you are as an individual, your ideas, your opinion, your political um, background. Um, I'm not here to try to persuade you or try to um, encourage you one way or the other. Okay. Um, but Trump joins the video platform Rumble that competes with Google's YouTube. And as you know, Trump had a, um, a rally over the past weekend. President Trump joining the video platform Rumble marked the beginning of his digital return after bans against his accounts have restricted his access on Facebook, Twitter, and Google on YouTube. While joining Rumble, a YouTube rival, Mr. Trump is attempting to re redefine his social media persona from that of an outcast muzzled into silence by the tech giants that to that of a defined outsider challenges the status quo. Followers should not expect to see any pithy blog posts on Rumble like they would on Twitter. Instead, the user experience is more akin to YouTube with short video clips and broadcasts. And the first video um, from Mr. Trump's account featured a live broadcast of his Saturday rally in Ohio. So again, Peter Thiel, Rumble, okay? Now, Peter Thiel is a, a supporter of Trump, okay? So that's just what it is. Um, he uh, donated to his campaign in 2016. He removed himself um, from the campaign trail in 2020. And I think that had to do more with like optics more than anything. And in a roundabout way, um, I guess if you want to use um, Saki's words, circle back to um, Rumble. So um, there we go, folks. Uh, Rumble is going to be a um, hit at some point. And, um, you know, I'm glad to be on that platform as well. Okay, so anyway, um, this is coming from the mediate.com Trump administration obliterates Bitcoin competitor with the SEC lawsuit. And uh, let's get into it. This is December 23rd, 2020. And I just wanted to read a couple um, parts here. Um, not too much because um, this is something where I know I've seen Peter Thiel's name in uh, the article. All right. Ripple, which was founded in 2012, is probably valued at around $10 billion and has been one of the largest companies seeking to create a digital currency for financial institutions to use and with backing from venture capital firms including Andries and Horowitz and Peter Thiel's Founders Fund, Ripple forged partnerships over the last several years with Bank of America and PNC among others. Okay, so those are some connections and partnerships with um, with Ripple and they'll probably more than likely be using XRP um, as their, you know, exchange token or, um, you know, token that will um, allow them to send um, great value um, across borders. So, again, 
um, Peter Thiel. Um, he is a founder um, or a contributor to um, Ripple. Um, at some point, I'm not sure if he ever took that, um, you know, he took that back um, or whatnot. But um, we just want to make sure that we're connecting the dots um, with Peter Thiel's involvement, okay? Um, and as we know, um, President Trump did sign Executive Order 13772 um, with Ripple being attached to that executive order. And then, uh, yeah, so... So, you know, if you want to go check out that executive order with Ripple, I think it's on page 91 um, on that executive order. So go back and take a peek at that. And especially if you have um, Peter Thiel um, being a um, contributor as well as uh, a venture uh, capital fund manager. OK, he's a founder fund uh, founders person. So and that, and that goes back over here um, to. Um, validate all of that information on uh crunch base as well so um anyway guys i w wanted to finish that up so we get out of that so um sorry folks if i triggered you no worries um i'm not gonna apologize because i'm only reporting on the news mit technology review right here big name investors back effort to build a better bitcoin some of silicon valley's best known venture funds have back OpenCoin, which is a startup with a new digital currency called Ripple. And this is back in April 11th, 2013. The value of Bitcoin has grown in the four years since the digital currency was invented, but there's been little interest from mainstream business or technology investors in using it. News today from OpenCoin, a startup today that launched its own digital currency called Ripple, now XRP, and tools for making transactions in other currencies, including Bitcoin, suggest that may change <clears throat> the company says it has attracted early investors of an undisclosed size from established venture capital firms including andries and horowitz which reportedly made over a hundred million dollars when microsoft bought skype and lightspeed ventures one of the first investors in networking company nakira which sold to vmware last year for 1.6 billion billion and OpenCoin has also received investments from Early Stage Wing Founders Fund, a venture firm owned by PayPal co-founder Peter Thiel. So again, folks, here we go with Peter Thiel. He's um, most definitely a venture capitalist. He loves to get into all of this tech stuff. And with that being said, um, you want to keep an eye on this guy. All right. You know, follow the money. Follow what these folks are doing. Okay, you can read the rest of the article. I'll leave that there for you. Um, but I always, I just wanted to make sure that we understand that Peter Thiel has his hands um, in this. Okay, some way, some shape, some form. Okay, and I wanted to make sure you guys are, um, you know, aware of who um, the venture capitalist is, and you know, if they're going to put their money um, into something, I believe um, their money they want the business that they're investing in uh, to most definitely be successful. And I do believe with his um, backing, um, especially with Andreessen and Horowitz as well, they're going to want uh, Ripple to be better uh, than Bitcoin. So um, that's that. And uh, moving forward, guys, this is coming from Palantir.com. Um, you know, he is uh, part of Palantir. And I think that um, Palantir um, is used for uh, specific reasons, um, you know, allows you, I, I don't know, it's like a system of infiltration, in, in my opinion, okay? And um, how do you get people to uh, get infiltrated? Um, you, you find uh, different technologies to do so, and we'll talk about that on the next article of how I think Palantir infiltrated some of these um, crooked people. Power real-time decisions. Institutions have the data they need to make the best decisions for safety, stability, and prosperity. But too often, their data is fragmented and locked in silos. The people on the front lines of our most important problems don't have the information they need when they need it the most. At Palantir, we build software that lets organizations integrate their data, their decisions, and their operations into one platform. Our software empowers entire organizations to answer complex questions quickly by bringing the right data to the people who need it. They protect privacy, 
Palantir was founded on the conviction that it is essential to preserve fundamental principles of privacy and civil liberties while using data. And from our roots, our counterterrorism to our current work spanning the public, private, and nonprofit sectors, we've delivered software that incorporates principles of privacy by design. So you can read more right there about their privacy and civil liberties engineering. And then if you wanted to learn more, you can learn how the platform break down barriers between data and decisions there. Okay, and then you can learn how organizations worldwide use Palantir platforms to improve how they operate. Okay, they got a gear store there. Um, and then you got some of the latest news there, um, down there. And then we'll go ahead and um, look at that. So you got products. You got Pal uh, Palantir Gotham, Palantir Foundry, Palantir Apollo. Then you got some solutions, AI and ML, autom automotive, COVID-19 response, data protection, energy insurance, law enforcement, manufacturing, retail, Skywise, supply chain risk management, anti-money laundering, auto racing, cyber, defense, health and life sciences, intelligence, legal intelligence, mergers and acquisitions, sales and revenue, as well as supply chains. And if, they, if you're looking for a career, they got careers here, engineering, culture, getting higher students, scholarships, and explore careers. And then about, you got privacy and civil liberties, life at Palantir, information security, investor relations, training, and you can also contact them. And then you got the newsroom with media, press releases, blogs, and demo series. <clears throat> and again, you could go to the store for some gear there. All right. So, um, with that being said, George Soros found fund is offloading Palantir shares because it does not approve of its business practices. Well, folks, how do you infiltrate certain people? Okay. And I think this is a move that will forever go down in history. Okay. How they were able to infiltrate this person. They don't like people saying his name. I don't care. George Soros, you are a demon. Okay. Anyway, Soros Fund Management, the assets management company founded by billionaire investor George Soros, has disclosed that it plans to sell its stake in Palantir. Palantir has been very been described as the company that knows everything about you, and its software is used by the government surveillance agency around the world for spying purposes. Soros Fund Management announced this week that it does not approve of Palantir businesses practices. All right, so again. Look at that lizard face. There's a special place for you, my friend. There's a special place for you. Palantir has been described as the company that knows everything about you, and its software is used by government surveillance agencies around the world by, for spying purposes. And it was co-founded in 2003 by German-American entrepreneur and venture capitalist Peter Thiel, who donated to Donald Trump's presidential campaign in 2016. Soros Fund Management announced this week that it does not approve of the Palantir's business practices. Palantir did not immediately respond to a CNBC request for comments, and the family off office, which uh, Soros founded in 1960, signed uh, back by Palantir privately in early 2012 through a portfolio manager who is no longer with the company, and it holds approximately 1% of Palantir's Class A limited voting shares. So again, I'll leave the rest for you to decipher. But again, you got to be able to infiltrate these folks to get rid of them um, because these are the folks that are um, doing uh, illegal stuff, um, contributing to um, some of the things that we're seeing around the world. Okay, so when you see people that hate you, that don't have your best interest in mind as a human being, um, then you need to see. Um, why <clears throat> I'm excited about, uh, well, I don't want anyone spying on anyone per se. Um, that's just not me. Okay. Because I think that you should be able to go about your business, um, on a day to day basis, um, where, you know, you have, uh, the privacy that you deserve, um, and the freedoms that you deserve as, you know, an individual human being and things like that. So, um, when I say I'm excited about this part, I'm only excited about the part that this person is has been infiltrated, okay? 
and sometimes you got to infiltrate from within to bring down their uh, corrupt um, organizations, their corrupt systems that promote propaganda, that promote, um, you know, unrest in the streets, civil unrest, civil disobedience and things like that. And we see that all across um, here in the United States. And then we also see, um, you know, this person, you know, donating to um, corrupt, crooked politicians um, here um, that don't have our best interests in mind. And I'm pretty sure this, you know, is worldwide um, as far as what this folk, this fool does. So anyway, folks, let's move forward um, with that. I don't want to get too far into it because I told you it wouldn't be a political video. And I don't want to I don't want to sway that way um, because. I want to keep it consistent and as far as cryptocurrency is concerned. Is EOS the new Bitcoin? Pay attention to Peter Thiel. Okay, this was March 2, 2021. Although Peter Thiel may be controversial for his outspoken political views that often clash with those of Silicon Valley type, his acumen for investing and picking winning startup ideas is rarely in doubt. Long before the cryptocurrency phenomenon spread like wildfire, Thiel was already famous for his investment picks. His $500,000 angel investment in Facebook turned into a post IPO fortune. Excuse me. And he has had a hand in big names like SpaceX, Airbnb, the payment processor, uh, processor Stripe. Okay. And we talked about Stripe a little bit too. Thiel has previously voiced his support for Bitcoin. Thus, the PayPal co founder's recent move uh, to support Block.1 developer behind EOS, which raised a record $4 billion during its offering, should come as no surprise to enter industry um, enthusiasts. So I am bullish on EOS, okay? I do have that in my portfolio, um, but now um, we're going to take a look at EOS, okay, um, at some point on the video. His bullish attitudes towards the sector has seen him strategically invest across the blockchain ecosystem over the past few years, allocating noteworthy sums for his founders fund towards Tagomi and Harbor. <clears throat> he has also been open about his desire to bring investors into the blockchain sphere. However, the latest allocation to EOS could reflect a serious directional change in strategy and investors should take note with a promise to build a better, more scalable protocol for bulk blockchain. EOS has found itself the center of attention in an often Bitcoin centric universe. Shifting ecosystem momentum, Thiel's decision to invest in Block.1, the company responsible for developing EOSIO, represents a sharp departure from his <clears throat> other blockchain based investments to date, joining high profile investors like Mike Novogratz, Bitmain Technologies, and More Capital. Management, Thiel's allocation represents the changing mindset of gradual maturation of blockchain as a widely applicable technology platform for other ideas to flourish. The investment announcement shows a growing trend in the sector. Serious investors are seeking out those projects that can provide more than a simple solution to a problem. This is clearly evidenced by the most well-funded and VC-backed blockchain projects. Cryptocurrencies continue to command the top spot in terms of attention, but the rest of the field rounded out by companies building enterprise software projects focused on improved mining and those developed being better crypto payment solution. EOS, one of the most promising projects as well as one of those most well-funded, is building more than a narrow solution. Instead, EOSIO ecosystem is a protocol much like Ethereum and not an application. <clears throat> The difference is more than semantic. The former is about building solutions that are more um, that are meant to improve blockchain functionality, um, while the latter is simply are simply programs that provide a specific function. And in this sense, projects like the Lightning Network stand out as their goal to upgrade the ecosystem to provide a broader functionality. Okay, protocols and the path towards success. Investors seeking out companies that offer broader protocols or use cases as opposed to narrow applications is not news, such as the case um, Ripple, a cryptocurrency designed specifically to set, settle cross-border transactions and large payment between parties. The company counts major 
multinationals such as Accenture and Santander's bank investment branch among its investors. Similarly, the Elephant, a smaller but promising platform that is building secondary market to uh, tokenize equity in private companies, recently announced a partnership with Eastmore Group, a prominent institutional investor. Eastmore is um, has joined the Elephant STO on the first institutional investors. All right, so let's go ahead and take um, Theo's cues. While newer entrants into the ecosystem may not be able to reap the same sort of returns as early investors, the shif shifting blockchain lot landscape might signal a significant transformation in terms of attitudes towards investing with uh, more institutional investors entering in the field. Few of these investors are likely to try a hit try and hit a home run with cryptocurrencies rather they will likely echo Thiel's moves towards embracing protocols over products as the only viable path towards greater adoption in the field that is encountering difficulties in terms of accessibility and scalability projects like EOS represent the next logical leap forward while greater institutional and credit investors participation seems like a foregone conclusion the investment tsunami that is potentially that it potentially represents may not find its way to highly capitalized coins but instead the protocols that deliver the most applicable solutions and the only question that remains is what will be the next eos early investors like Thiel will undoubtedly be rewarded while <clears throat> laggards and later adopters will see their potential returns diminish by a belated entrance so again folks I'm giving it to you. EOS is one of those ones we need to heavily consider. Okay. I think it's at like three, three bucks, a little bit over three bucks. And it's been hanging around that price range for a very, very long time. Okay. And um, it's accumulator. And um, again, follow the money. All right. I'm not telling you what to do. This is never financial advice. I'm not a financial advisor. But when we look at all of this, it just lets me know that we're on the right trail okay we're on the right trail with some of these things and um, I want to say Arrington Capital um, invested in EOS 2 don't quote me on that um, but when we do a video on EOS most definitely um, I'm going to be taking a look at this today while I'm at my um, you know when I'm able to have some free time at the you know the estate today so um, we'll look at EOS we'll probably more than likely do a video on that tomorrow okay so stay tuned with that so we dig into um, EOS and what the potential of uh, this cryptocurrency uh, will bring to your portfolio so again let's move forward IB IBM Palantir forge partnerships in a low-code AI data processing space okay and this was uh, February 8th 2021 from uh, ZDNet.com Palantir for IBM Cloud Pack for data is a new hybrid cloud solution designed for a low code AI deployment. IBM, again, IBM, IBM is all over the joint, isn't it? Okay. And Palantir have been, have announced partnership to merge hybrid cloud artificial intelligence, data processing, and operating technology in a new um, enterprise offering. On Monday, the company said that the new solution, Palantir for IBM Cloud Pack for data, will simplify how businesses build and deploy AI-infused applications with IBM Watson and help users assess, analyze, and take actions on the vast amounts of data that is scattered across hybrid cloud environments without the need for deep technical skills. Palantir for IBM Cloud Pack for Data brings together Palantir Foundry, a data integration and analysis platform, and IBM Cloud Pack for Data Services, including IBM Watson. The new enterprise product has been built to reduce data silos and cut the technical enterprise generally required to make use of AI analysis. According to IBM, the offering will be a low, no low code uh, platform for deploying AI applications able to process data effectively and quickly, extending existing enterprise systems and accelerate <coughs> their digital transformation. So, folks, you could go ahead and check that out um, as, as well. You can read the rest of this. All right. I want to move forward to the last article um, before we end the video. 
all right um this is coming from investorsplace.com palantir technologies government contracts will put it on top okay palantir technologies has recently signed several government contracts worth 169 million making palantir our pltr stock very very attractive and this is from two days ago big data company palantir technologies is slowly but surely moving higher this year i have always been bullish on palantir stock the shares are up 23 percent over the last month and 167 percent over the past year now i've mentioned palantir before um I've only trade options on um, Palantir, okay, and that's just me. Um, I don't like to hold stocks. I'm not a stock person, um, but, you know, I will make sure that I take a little bit uh, deeper look. I think Palantir is at 23 bucks. Um, I'll look for you right now, but many investors who have remained patient with the name have made big gains. If you have missed out on the opportunity to buy PLTR stock, it is not too late to do so yet. Palantir was trading at a um, nine dollars twenty cents in October of 2020, and went as high as forty five dollars <throat> in 2021. Okay, and it is nowhere close to forty five dollars now, as it closed at twenty six dollars seventy um, eight cents on Friday. Um, so, um, Palantir Technologies is a strong company with high growth potential, and investing in Palantir stock will generate strong returns in the long term. And with that in mind, let's take a look at the case for investing in Palantir. And again, the government sector favors Palantir. Government contracts have remained one of the main sources of revenue for the company. Palantir is trying to increase its commercial revenue, but it continues to remain the top choice for government, providing um, its strength and capabilities. The government will not sign contracts with companies they are that are unreliable are incompetent so there you go folks the government won't get involved in some of these things um and right now again as i looked at it palantir is up on today is at 26 dollars 79 cents um up 15 cents today and again uh they said the high the 52 week high is 45 dollars 52 week low is eight dollars and 90 cents okay and last week Palantir Technology signed a contract with Federal Aviation Administration to provide tools for using data to determine whether aircraft should be certified. It's a one-year contract with two options, uh, with two option years, and is valued at 18.4 million. So again, folks, we did look at the uh, we 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 looked at aviation yet yesterday, kind of with. Uh, um, H bar as well, um, and their deals with uh, NASA. Okay, and further, the company has formed an alliance with Original Materials to accelerate the transition of world to net zero carbon emissions. Origin Materials is a leader in the carbon negative material industry, and the alliance between the firms with um, will focus on the decarbonizing of the global supply chain. Last month, Palantir signed a one-year, seven point four million dollar contract with the United States Special Operations Command worth $111 million. And it also renewed its partnership with the CDC for monitoring disease and response to outbreaks. It also expanded its par partnerships with the United States uh, Space Force and will provide its software to the force. This deal is worth $32.5 million. So, folks, I don't know about you, but um, when you're talking about the United States uh, Space Force, um, SpaceX, things like that, I mean, boom, there you go. Palantir will be boosted by its government contracts in the long term. However, the company is not solely focused on government contracts. Its commercial client base is growing and will certainly increase in the coming years. And it's important for investors to understand that Palantir has existed more than a decade and is not a one-trick pony. It has an impressive business that can continue to generate high revenue in the coming years. The bottom line on the Palantir stock, the demand for data analysis is going to rise in the future, and Palantir will be a leader in this area. Palantir has strong fundamentals and stable cash flow, and in quarter one, the company generated fee free cash flow of $151 million and a total revenue of $341 million. 
Over the last month, the company has signed government contracts worth a total of $169 million, and that proves that Palantir software can help companies analyze data, and when a company's products work well, demand for them to naturally grow. Although most of Palantir continues to come from government clients, the company looks well positioned to obtain significantly more major commercial clients as well. Keeping everything in mind, I believe Palantir stock is a great addition to investors' portfolios, and I think that every pullback of the shares create good buying opportunities. The risk-reward um, ratio of Palantir stock is quite favorable, but investors must be very patient with it. Okay, so be patient if you're going to be diving into Palantir. Um, right now, again, 26 bucks, 27 bucks. And again, dollar cost average is that is that's what you want to do um, in regards to that. So anyway, folks, I hope that uh, you got a lot out of this video, some new information that was um, uh, put out there for you to consume. Okay, always use your discernment um, when it comes to investing and um, deciphering the information. And again, I want to always, you know, try to put my best foot forward in providing that information regardless of um, your political, you know, affiliation or background. Um, again, I, I don't want it to ever become this side or that side um, because we're all human beings and that's the only side that i'm really um, excited about of being on is the side of the people um, giving them opportunities or sharing um, possible opportunities that will allow you um, as a person as a individual to grow um, your worth your value um, when you, you are um, investing and coming up with a strategy to invest so hopefully, you know, I've given you guys some some, some solid information, um, you know, so, you know, don't get mad at me because I, I'm, I'm putting out the information. Um, I'm not going to apologize because I'm only going to report um, on um, the news as I see it and how it is um, applied to, you know, the things that we are looking at as far as um, projects and connecting dots. So anyway, um, follow the money learn a lot from Peter Thiel there's so much more I'm pretty sure that I'm missing um, in regards to him but this is for today's video and I just wanted to make sure that we covered a little bit of it um, before I get up out of here to go to work <clears throat> so good morning again thank you guys for tuning in and um, if you guys don't mind hit the like button hit that thumbs up um, if you're on rumble again um, hit that rumble button and um, I'm excited about that um, platform as well so if there's ever some stocks or anything like that, uh, most definitely um, we'll, we'll look at that when that time comes because I do believe um, YouTube will um, have have its day, okay? And I think a lot of these um, platforms will um, crumble at the weight of their own corruption um, and their you know censoring and things like that. Um, so no matter what, um, I don't want you to be censored. I want you to have your voice. And everyone should have their voice, uh, no matter what. And we shouldn't be um, taken off platforms because we say one thing or the other. And um, I'm not afraid to say anything. Um, I just kind of don't want to go through the um, hoops of trying to um, have my account um, suspended or terminated or, you know, I guess, you know, you know, shadow banned or whatever uh, you want to call it. I want to always be able to put out a video. Um, every single day um, that I'm able to without any um, flack or anything like that. So anyway, guys, I want to hear what you have to say. Leave your comments in the description. Okay, I, I love all comments. It doesn't matter who you are, um, whether it be, you know, negative feedback or, you know, critical feedback. I'm all for it. You know, just keep it respectful and things like that. And most definitely, I'm going to respect your opinions and ideas, too. So anyway, guys, have a great rest of your day. Um, I look forward to hearing from you tomorrow. And most definitely, we're going to be diving into EOS and looking at that project, see what uh, the partnerships are there, seeing uh, some connections with that, see where we can um, get in on that. Okay, so take care. God bless. And as always, treat everyone with class, dignity and respect. Bye bye.